morning. So um, my name is Frank Justro. I'm not a physicist. I want to make that very clear uh, to start with. Uh, as a matter of fact, if my high school science teacher were here today listening to me on the stage, he'd probably faint and then more likely have a heart attack. <laughs> I wasn't really into, uh, into science in high school, and, and I'm not sure why. I guess it's probably just the way it was taught in those days. But a couple of decades ago, I um, started reading about uh, physics, and uh, then I started to watch uh, a lot of lectures and interviews on, on YouTube. And I have to tell you, it's one of the most fascinating things I've ever immersed myself in. It's, it, it, I have to, if, if you're not into physics, get into it. And it's, it's really, it's a, it's a big rabbit hole, and you will continue to ask yourself questions and make discoveries. It's just a fascinating subject. Um, so, you know, for centuries, we have lived or perceived a reality that explained our surroundings and made sense to us. But then around 100 years ago, uh, it turned out reality was not what we thought it was. Uh, the universe wasn't what we thought it was. Um, and as a result, uh, the technologies that we've created advanced exponentially. Uh, and today's world is, would be unrecognizable to someone living, say, 100 years ago. Um, but as much as our technologies have advanced, it is my opinion that we're just in the first innings of what our future holds. And to give you a sense of what I mean by that, I, I, I want you to pretend for a moment just pretend that it's about 100 years ago. Um, you're sitting in this lecture hall. Let's say it's uh, 1914, to be exact, OK? And you're sitting here, and I'm making a prediction that in about a year's time, a new theory will come out that will change your whole perception of time, space, and the universe. Uh, the time wasn't what you thought it was. Uh, and furthermore, I, I would say that a few years after that, another theory would come to be that would um, <laughs> really suggest that the reality that you perceive is completely different. That the smallest components that make up our reality behave in very strange ways. That um, uh, a particle can be in, this, in two different locations at the same time, that you could take another piece of matter and separate it by vast distances, and they would still be connected simultaneously. Well, your first reaction might be, well, listen, uh, great, but I just want to smoke whatever, whatever it is you're smoking. It sounds kind of weird, this stuff. But then, to your surprise, both those theories came true. And then you'd probably say, okay, fine, great. That's super, but so what? What's, how's that gonna change my life? And I would have to say, if I were honest, I would say, I haven't got a clue. And that would be the truth. Um, however, pretend for a moment that I had a wild imagination, that um, I could make some predictions. Pretend for a moment that I told you that one of these theories would create a technology that would allow anyone to pinpoint their exact location anywhere on Earth at any given moment. And then more importantly, that the other theory would uh, allow us to process, create materials that would allow us to process unimaginable amounts of information in a fraction of a second, such that one day you could hold in the palm of your hand a device that would give you access to all the knowledge in the world that we would create these narrow beams of light that would not only cut through metal, but also transfer information and images and, and, and read coding, that we would create a device that would look at intricate details inside your body, or that we could create electricity from sunlight or from tiny atoms. And the list would go on and on. Uh, it's endless. Well, I would imagine if I were prescient enough to say those things 100 years ago, you would think, that I was loony. Well, that's exactly what happened. And because of uh, general relativity, we have GPS systems. Because of quantum mechanics, we have almost everything that is in your society today, from uh, the modern computer to MRIs, to LED lighting, to modern agriculture, um, solar cells, and the list, again, is endless. Almost everything that you use today with modern technology re relies on the theory of quantum mechanics. 
Now, general relativity and quantum mechanics are two perfect theories, but there's a big problem. They don't get along. They're incompatible. They're actually often contradictory to each other. And uh, they don't really explain our entire reality. And that's where the theory of quantum gravity comes in. That's why we're here today. Um, and when we achieve that knowledge, it is the, my belief and the belief of many people you will hear from today that um, it will change our world in ways you can't even imagine. Um, and who knows what sort of things may be possible, but again, just like 100 years ago, you can make some wild predictions that you might not believe today. Time travel, the control of gravity, quantum devices, quantum communications, um, and perhaps uh, uh, an abundance of clean energy, endless amounts of clean energy. And that's the part that excites me the most, is to be part of that quest, that we are here today to talk about the quantum gravity society that's been created and, the, and our future Quantum Gravity Institute and what it hopes to achieve, to convene the type of conversations that will hopefully someday lead to a discovery of a quantum gravity theory that can be proven. And that's the important part. We're, we're working on, a, on theories that we know in a few years' time, maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time, we'll be able to test some of these theories through lab experiments or through observation of the cosmos. So I think you're gonna enjoy today. Uh, I, I certainly, I'm, I'm really looking forward today, to today. I have been for, we've been talking about this for the last couple of years. At least I got involved a couple of years ago. I know that uh, certain others have been talking about this for quite a bit longer. So um, before we get started, I just want to acknowledge all the people that made this possible. You know, obviously Philip Stamp, who's one of the originators of this idea, the board, which includes Bill Unruh, uh, Brigitte Wally, uh, Sir Roger Penrose, who unfortunately isn't here today, but we'll be listening to him by a, a Zoom call later on. Um, uh, Abu Ashtkar, um, Terry Huey, Paul Lee, Marcus Friend, and I hope I've gotten everybody. And I also wanna thank, and Mo Kermani, I'm sorry, Mo, who's probably the smartest one of, out of a, all the business guys in this group. <laughs> um, and lastly, I want to thank two people. I want to acknowledge uh, Laura Daphne and, and Swan Ray, who uh, made this event possible. You know, they really worked hard on this. Um, and look, the room is full. It's the middle of summer. You're all here. And have fun. It's going to be a great day. Thank you.